Hey guys, I'm Jesse Prey. And I'm Andy Cassette. We're the hosts of the podcast Love Murder, which is a weekly true crime podcast about love gone fatally wrong. Listen to Love Murder on the iHeart app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, listeners. I'm your host, Amara, and this is Black Girl Gone, a true crime podcast. On this episode of Black Girl Gone, we tell the story of Irene Gakwa, who was 32 years old when she disappeared from Gillette, Wyoming on February 24th, 2022. Irene was originally from Kenya, and she moved to the United States to pursue a career in nursing. After meeting a man online, she began dating him, and the couple eventually moved to Wyoming. The last time that Irene's family spoke to her was via video chat on February 24th. A few weeks later, they reported her missing. When police asked her boyfriend about her disappearance, he said that she packed up her things and left. Two months later, he was arrested and charged with stealing her money. Now, seven months after Irene was last seen, she is still missing, and her family is desperate to find her. What happened to Irene, and where is she? This is Irene's story. Irene Gakwa disappeared seven months ago, and her case is a very active one. Because of that, there are things about this story that are not available to the public. Now, I know recently what happened to Irene got some much-needed attention when CNN featured her story a couple weeks ago, which is a good thing, but Irene had already been missing for almost seven months before her story made the national media. And by that time, A lot of things had already happened in this case that were extremely disturbing. But there had been no coverage before earlier this month. Now, seven months in a missing person case is like a lifetime. So even though it's good that her story finally reached the mainstream media, it would have been helpful for them to pick up the story when it first happened. In my opinion, it kind of felt reactionary. I mean, the story about Irene's disappearance began to hit the national media amongst the frenzy of coverage surrounding the missing jogger who was kidnapped in Tennessee. And like I said, the coverage is good. I mean, way more people now know that Irene is missing, but imagine if her story got that attention in the days and weeks after she vanished. As I said in the beginning, this case is still active. And depending on when you listen to this episode, there could be new information that is not included because it wasn't available to me at the time I recorded. But I wanted to cover her story because it's been less than a year. And I think it's important to keep Irene's story and face out there until she is found and her family get answers. Three years ago, when Irene came to the United States, she had big dreams. She was born and raised in Kenya. Her parents, Frances and Joyce, had four children. Irene is the youngest and their only daughter. According to whereisirene.com, which is a website that has been created to spread information about her disappearance, the Gakwas were a close-knit family. And growing up, Irene had a great relationship with her parents and her siblings. As a child, she was described as an introvert who preferred spending time by herself or with her parents. As Irene grew up, she remained close to her family, and family was very important to all of them. And Irene helped her parents and took really good care of them. Irene had always loved helping people, and she had dreams of working in healthcare. And so in May 2019, she decided to move to the United States so that she could go to school. Now, moving to a new country is not an easy thing, but Luckily for Irene, two of her brothers were already here. Her brother Chris and his wife Joyce were living in Idaho with their children, and so Irene moved in with them. Even though her brothers were already living in the United States, Irene's parents told CNN that they were not really happy about her moving. I mean, they were worried about their shy, introverted daughter, and they thought that she might have a hard time adjusting to living so far away from what she had always known. I mean, even in Kenya, her parents said that 
she would rarely leave the house. But their sons being there did ease some of their concerns. Now, once Irene moved to Idaho, her plan was to enroll in nursing school. But while living with her brother and sister-in-law, Irene was also a really big help. She was a loving aunt who loved spending time with her nieces and nephews. And she and her sister-in-law, Joyce, also developed a really close friendship while Irene was there. Joyce told CNN that they would spend time together, going out, shopping. She said that Irene was a free spirit who was caring and goofy, and she said that she would just go with the flow. After only being in the U.S. for a little while, it seemed like Irene was adjusting well. From the way she's described during that time period, it seemed like she was really happy. She had also gotten a job working at a group home helping the elderly, and it was a good job for her since she wanted to be a nurse, and she was really good with older people. Irene was beginning to build a life here for herself. The summer of 2020 was the first time that her sister-in-law said that she heard the name Nathan Heitman. And Joyce said that Irene had told her about him, but Joyce said that she didn't really go into details about their relationship. They had, according to CNN, met on Craigslist in some kind of forum. Now, I didn't even know Craigslist was still around, and so I definitely didn't know that people were still meeting people on the site. But after meeting on Craigslist, Irene began dating Nathan. Now, he was an unemployed tech worker who was also living in Idaho. Her brother said that the family had met Nathan a few times, but they didn't really know much about him. And not long after they began dating, Irene and Nathan moved in together, and she enrolled in nursing school at the College of Western Idaho. After living together for a little over a year, the couple decided that they were going to move to Gillette, Wyoming. I couldn't find any information about why they moved to Wyoming, but Gillette was 800 miles away from Meridian, Ohio, where her brothers lived. And it didn't appear that Irene knew anyone there prior to moving. But in the summer of 2021, they moved and Irene transferred to Gillette Community College. Once in Gillette, Irene's family said that they began to feel some distance between them, and they started to worry whether or not Irene was okay. However, they knew her to be a really independent person, and so they figured that she would be fine. They figured, you know, she was probably just caught up in her new life in Wyoming. I mean, after all, we're not talking about a teenager. Irene was in her 30s at this point, and so they really tried not to worry about her too much. Now, although we don't know much about their relationship at this point, Irene's family said that Nathan and Irene's relationship was on again, off again. And her brother told wyomingtruth.org that the family never really liked Nathan. They thought that he was controlling. In the months following her move, Irene would travel back and forth to Meridian where her family was to visit with them and spend time with her nieces and nephews. She would also talk to her parents almost daily. They would video chat and text using WhatsApp. I mean, even though many things had changed in her life since moving to the U.S., the one thing that Irene made sure to always do was to talk to her parents. Her father told CNN that from time to time, he would ask his daughter if she wanted to come back home to Kenya, but she would tell him that she was good and that she had her own life now. Her family said that she always liked being independent, and so it probably was not surprising that Irene was happy with her life. Irene came back to Meridian for Thanksgiving in 2021, and her family said that they had a great time together, cooking and eating. Everything was normal. Irene was happy. But it was Irene's last trip to Meridian, and her family there never saw her in person again. Now, while it appears that Irene continued to live with Nathan, at some point, her family believed that they had broken up and were no longer in a relationship. And maybe they had broken up. But by February 2022, it appears that they were back together and still living together. But 
Irene didn't tell her family. And they were all under the impression that the relationship was over. Now, for whatever reason, she didn't want to tell them that they were back together. And maybe it was because she knew that they didn't really like him and didn't want her back with him. Now, we don't know what was happening in Irene's life in the days leading up to her disappearance. But we do know that on February 24th, 2022, Irene spoke to her parents via video chat. Her father said that they had a normal conversation, but he could tell that Irene wasn't entirely herself. She seemed tired, but she didn't say that anything was wrong, and she didn't really appear to be worried about anything in particular. But it was the last time that the Gakwas would speak to their daughter. As I said before, even after moving to Wyoming, Irene still made sure to keep in contact with her family, especially her parents. After speaking to their daughter on the 24th, Irene's parents had attempted to contact her several times in the days after, but they were getting no response. Now, for them, it was immediately concerning because Irene would never just not answer their calls or texts. Now, on March 3rd, 2022, about a week after her parents last spoke to her, Irene's parents began receiving messages via WhatsApp from Irene's account. Now, at first, this would appear to be a good thing because Irene had been missing for days, but the messages that were being sent were strange, and they didn't appear to be coming from Irene. She spoke Swahili and used Kenyan slang in her text, but these messages were in pure English and not written like how Irene writes. But not only that, the messages themselves just didn't make any sense. I mean, one of the messages said that she was moving to Texas, and then another message said that she dropped her phone in water and that the microphone was no longer working. But none of these messages sounded like her, and they seemed to be random. She also kept making excuses and promising to call, but she never did. After days of not speaking to Irene, Her parents called her brothers to see if they had spoken to their sister, but like their parents, they had only gotten messages from Irene. No one had actually spoken to her. The last messages from Irene's WhatsApp account was on March 9th, her father told CNN. Now, on March 10th, according to the official timeline, her phone number was then deleted. Irene's family was becoming increasingly more worried about her. Strange messages, not video chatting with her parents. I mean, it was all a very bad sign to them. Luckily for her brothers, they were able to access Irene's phone records because they all shared the same plan. Left with no other choice, they started combing through her phone calls and messages, and they found the number to a friend of Irene's that she had spoken to several times. And when they speak to the friend, they find out that Irene was living with Nathan. Now, like I said, prior to this, her family thought that her relationship with Nathan was over. And so they were taken aback when they found out that not only were they back together, but they were living together. On March 20th, 2022, Irene's family decided to contact the Gillette Police Department to report her missing. After receiving the report, an officer went over to the three-bedroom home where Irene had lived with Nathan to speak to him. And Nathan told police that he had not seen Irene since February 24th. He told them that that day, Irene came home from a restaurant and packed up her things and left. He said that she put her belongings inside two black plastic bags and then got into a dark-colored SUV. Now, as soon as her family heard the story that Nathan was telling police, they knew it wasn't true. There was no way that Irene would have just left Gillette and not told them. And on top of that, Nathan had not contacted them. I mean, by the time the police were called, it had been almost a month, and Nathan had never called them to see if Irene was there. Her family had never really trusted Nathan to begin with, and 
His behavior now was only making them more suspicious of him. As police began to investigate what happened to Irene, they would learn some very disturbing new things about what Nathan was doing in the hours and days after Irene was last seen. And Nathan would quickly rise to the top of the suspect list. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I think we can all relate to feeling stuck, especially when we're dealing with problems in our lives. But what if we could change our situation by focusing on solutions instead of problems? I mean, it can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. Therapy can be really beneficial and can help you reduce the stress that comes with everyday life. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash girlgone today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash girlgone. On March 20th, 2022, Irene Gakwa's family reported her missing after almost a month of not speaking to her. At the time, Irene was living in Gillette, Wyoming with her boyfriend, Nathan. She last spoke to her parents on February 24th, but Nathan told police that that same night, Irene came home, packed her stuff, and left in a black SUV. But he never reported her missing and never told her family that she left. As police began the investigation into her disappearance, they would soon find out that Nathan may have something to hide. As part of their initial investigation into what happened to Irene, police in Gillette obtained several search warrants, including warrants for Irene's bank accounts and email. At this point, Nathan had stopped communicating with Irene's family, and when they had asked him to return Irene's personal belongings, including her passport, he refused. From the moment Irene was reported missing, it was obvious that Nathan wasn't going to help locate her. He was the only person her family knew in Gillette, and he offered them no assistance in finding his girlfriend. When police got the information back from the warrants, what police found in Irene's family was unsettling. Now, after accessing her phone records, police learned that Irene's phone was last active in Gillette on March 4th, which would indicate that the messages that her family received after that date had not come from Irene's phone. But her family had already suspected that Irene was not the one sending those messages. Now, on February 25th, the day after Nathan alleged Irene moved out with two trash bags, the warrant showed that he accessed Irene's bank accounts and began transferring money to himself via Zelle. He also, on that day, changed her banking password. Now, within four days of Irene going missing, Nathan had allegedly transferred $1,000 to himself. And they also learned that Nathan was allegedly using Irene's credit cards, too. Now, the same day, the day after she went missing, Nathan made the first of nearly 40 different transactions using Irene's credit cards, according to police. A surveillance camera on that day also captured him purchasing boots and a shovel that were later found inside his house. Within three days, Between the 25th and the 28th of February, according to police, Nathan spent more than $800 on Irene's credit card. And then he continued. Police allege that between March 1st and March 19th, Nathan spent a total of $2,426 in charges on her credit card. 
and that he used her credit card until it reached the $3,100 limit. But it wasn't just the credit cards. Investigators allege that Nathan continued to transfer money out of Irene's bank account. And they found out that on March 10th, Irene's Gmail account was deleted from Nathan's computer. Now, while police combed through the information that they were learning from the warrants, Irene's brothers were trying to find their sister. Their parents are 9,000 miles away in Kenya, and they didn't know anyone in Gillette, but they knew that they had to do whatever they could to find their sister. However, not being from the area and not knowing anyone put them at a disadvantage. I mean, where would they even start? Luckily for them, there was a group of women in Gillette that wanted to help. Stacy Coaster and Heidi Kennedy had never met Irene, but when they learned about her disappearance, they felt compelled to help her family. They have organized searches in Gillette and recruited other volunteers to help find Irene. For her family, these women have been a godsend. They've been a huge help for Irene's family and have been a driving force behind keeping her story in the public eye. They have searched all over the area, by foot, by car, even horseback, searching in everything from dumpsters to fields. In the beginning, they would search morgues and hospitals and even shelters in hopes of finding Irene. Heidi told CNN that despite having never met Irene, that she was a part of their community and they were going to keep searching for her. Now, as searchers looked for Irene, they were unaware of the things that police had uncovered about Nathan and his activity after Irene was last seen. On April 10th, 2022, he had officially been named a person of interest, but it wasn't until his arrest a month later that people in the community learned that Nathan may know way more about Irene's disappearance than he was saying. When police confronted Nathan about stealing Irene's money and draining her accounts, Nathan told police that he had taken the money in an attempt to get Irene's attention and force her to contact him. But Nathan was not authorized to access Irene's accounts, and he did not have permission to change her passwords, subsequently locking her out of her own accounts. Now, Nathan was charged with five counts of financial fraud, including two felony counts of theft and one count of unlawful use of a credit card. The evidence against Nathan in this case was hard to ignore, but he was not charged with Irene's disappearance. He pled not guilty to the theft charges, and he was given a $10,000 bond and was released from jail. Now, the day after Nathan's arrest, the local Crime Stoppers offered a $1,000 reward for information. Police, however, believe the person with the most answers is Nathan, and he has refused to talk to them or cooperate in their investigation. They said that Nathan had, quote, not made himself available to detectives looking to resolve questions that exist in this investigation. For her family, especially her parents, the devastation of her disappearance has affected them deeply. Her parents are so far away, and to have their youngest child, their only daughter, missing in a foreign country is extremely difficult. It's a 12-hour drive for her brothers from their homes in Idaho, but they travel to Gillette as much as they can. This ordeal has taken a toll on all of them. Shortly after Nathan was arrested, investigators released a statement asking the public for information regarding a 55-gallon drum. Now, in their statement, they wouldn't say why they were looking for this information, but Irene's brother told CNN that police said that they've received information from neighbors of Nathan's that he had been burning something inside a 55-gallon drum in late February, early March. He said the police told them that they searched Nathan's property to locate the drum, but they couldn't find it. According to the site that's dedicated to finding Irene, Nathan purchased the drum the day that Irene went missing. 
Investigators also began requesting information about a silver Subaru with Idaho plates that may have been seen on any private property around the time that Irene was last seen. But they have not said why they're asking for that information either. And Nathan is scheduled to be back in court in November to be tried on the theft charges brought against him. But police still don't have enough evidence or any evidence that he was involved in what happened to Irene. In Gillette, Stacy and her team of volunteers have been relentless in their efforts to bring Irene home. They have organized rallies in front of Nathan's home where they hold up signs and yell at him, asking him where Irene is. Now, Nathan, because of all of this, has recently filed a stalking protection order against Stacy. Nathan alleged that Stacy was harassing him with unsolicited calls and texts. And he also said that Stacy put his schedule online so that people could harass him and that she drove past his house yelling at him. Stacy denied the allegations and said that she had only texted Nathan in July to encourage him to help find Irene, something that he's never done. Now, a few days after Nathan filed the petition, the judge dismissed it. In total, the Gillette police have executed 24 search warrants, and although they have learned a lot, their biggest question is yet to be answered. And that is, where is Irene? It's been seven long months now since Irene's family last saw her. And over the past few weeks, her story has gotten more attention. And there's most likely more information that police have that they cannot speak on right now. And so in the meantime, I believe that the best thing that we can do as the public is continue to share Irene's story until she is found. If Nathan does have more information that he is not telling the police, then he should know that not only are the people in Gillette sharing Irene's story, we all are. Irene came to this country looking for new opportunities and a chance to live her dream. She didn't just leave. And her family deserves to know what happened to her. They miss her. She was supposed to be going home to Kenya for Christmas this year. And as the months go by, her family finds it harder to remain optimistic that she will be found safe, but they are not willing to give up. As of today, Nathan Heitman still has not been charged with Irene's disappearance, but he remains a person of interest. Irene's family last spoke to her on February 24th, 2022. At the time, Irene was living in Gillette, Wyoming. She is five foot one and weighs 90 pounds. If you have any information about Irene Gakwa's disappearance, please contact the Gillette, Wyoming Police Department. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Make sure you subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. It also helps our show grow. As always, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook.